What's up you guys? This video is important as you can tell by the title. So important that I will need your guys help later on in the video when I explain. So as you can tell by the title I rescued three guinea pigs and I also have an update on the rabbits that I rescued a couple weeks ago. Also if you hear the guinea pigs in the background don't mind that. They've been running around like crazy and I'm glad that they are. To get on a sad note, three of the rabbits passed away out of four and I'm really upset, like, I cried because when you do rescues like that, I, I don't think I could do it again. When you run in your head about, like, what did you do wrong and everything, I realize it's such a common thing for baby rabbits, especially in the wild, that's, that's a common thing is they're gonna pass away. The first one to pass was a little girl. Now, you're supposed to bottle feed them. And I fed them this KMR kitten milk replacement. I've heard, looked online and this is what you use. And I fed them like five milliliters in the morning and then at night. The little girl wasn't doing the best. She was actually the smallest. She weighed only two ounces. Meanwhile, the biggest one, weighed 2.9 and he's actually the one that did survive you also have to like rub their behind to make sure that they pee and it also stimulates that they're going to eat she would not pee for me at all like the boys would and she wouldn't and she ended up just passing away and then shortly after two of the boys passed away they had diarrhea it's like when I fed them, they weren't getting the nutrients and like I knew they were looking more sickly and I, I tried feeding them more. Um, I tried constantly cleaning her behind and you know, I knew those two weren't going to make it so I quarantined them away from the rabbit that did make it and they passed away the next day. And I was, I was like so heartbroken because when you rescue, you always go through in your head, like I said, you, you go through in your head if you did anything wrong. And I know for sure that I tried my best and I'm hoping he survives. He's actually been doing really well. He's been jumping around everywhere. He's been doing really well and being really energetic. I'm just happy that he's able to survive and if he survives then I know that it was worth it to take them in. I think the reason the mother abandoned them was because they were sick. How I end up getting them was a, a family member's friend contacted me and my mother and I decided to take them in. They kept on crawling out of the nest and they didn't even have their eyes open and they kept crawling out the nest and there was nowhere where the mother was at. There was nowhere to be seen so I took them in and that's how I got them. Now they're cottontail rabbits which means it's illegal to own them so my plan is to just rehabilitate and release. That's the plan. I know there's some people who would say they keep them but I, I've read so much online to know that Yes, they. You, you might think that they're safer in your house and I might say, yeah, but at the same time, it's illegal. So if you try to go to any vets, they're, they're gonna say no because you're owning a legal pet. And for two, it's usually their stress. They stress really easily. Like they may seem like the same species as a domesticated rabbit, but they're not. I, that's what I found out when researching, so. Be mindful of that if you do find any baby rabbits to to contact your your local shelter or a rehabilitator rescue all that but on a positive note he's doing well and once he's able to eat on his own he's gonna be released I already know where I'm gonna release him and you know it's gonna be a good area for him it really sucks that they passed but I'm just glad that he's at least doing well. And he's he has been, and I really hope he stays like that. Guinea pig update. And this is 
I might get a little annoyed talking about the guinea pigs because of the owner and the lack of information that she gave me and the complete ignorance of her manner. I was looking at Facebook groups and joined a couple and I saw these free pets in my area and I decided to join it and that's where I found this post of this woman rehoming her three guinea pigs with their cage and food for free. There is a problem with that. Like if you rehome animals for free, especially if they're guinea pigs or rodents like rabbits, rats, people could take those pets, not care for them, and use them for food for their snake or whatever animal they use. Cause I know there's some people who would do that just keep that in mind if you ever rehome your animals to you know really talk to people and discuss what their plans are with your pet when you rehome them because i had to do the same when it came to my tortoise i had to rehome him because of the living situation i was in and of course i question people and i i put for free because i really want him to just to go to a good home at least someone who knows about tortoises and you know, I talked with the person and I was happy with who I gave him to because she owned other tortoises as well. So just do your research and make sure you do talk to the right people when you do rehome your animals. She was rehoming them for free along with their stuff, which is, is nice. You know, I can't complain with the free stuff that was with it, obviously, but I'm, I can complain about the care and the stuff that they, like, the enclosure they were in. I'm just gonna say what it came with and then, like, my issues with this woman. What came with them was a hutch, two water bottles, chew sticks, which some, some weren't open, a brush and a dustpan, like a miniature one, Timothy Hay and a cat dish. The problems I dealt with like when it came to her care is the cage. The hutch which I'm actually using now and I heavily cleaned. I'm using it for the, the baby rabbit because it has such small wiring that he can't get out and he's actually running around in it right now as we speak. But it was just it was filthy for one which I don't mind. I clean it I know that's gonna happen. It felt like she did it very last minute, the way she packed stuff in a trash bag and stuff was covered in pee that I just had to clean it with Dawn and hose it and everything. I don't mind that. What I do mind though is this cage is small. This hutch is so small. You know, when you hear the word hutch, you think they're big, but this one she got was so small. It was. 80 bucks too. She told me she spent a lot of money and of course she did because she spent 80 bucks. Let me tell you that you could get something cheaper for bigger and better for your guinea pigs. So I have written down the measurements here on my paper. I have like notes here. This hutch is 19.5 inches which is 1.6 feet and wide, like long by 27.2 inches, which is 2.26 feet, which I calculated and that's 3.6 square feet. Now, one or two guinea pigs needs eight square feet. This isn't even half of what they need. This is less than half of what they need. So it's a really tiny area and she had three guinea pigs in there. It's not even fit for one guinea pig, let alone three. The cage I have is a Midwest cage. It's a four by two. It can house two guinea pigs. It's eight square feet, so it's plenty. It's like, it's the bare minimum for two guinea pigs, although I wish it'd be bigger and I'm soon gonna get bigger because I have three guinea pigs. So I'm most likely gonna get another uh, Midwest cage and add an extension so it would be um, it would be 12 square feet would be enough for three guinea pigs 
her cage cost $80, mine cost $40, so you can house two guinea pigs in a $40 cage more so than this $80 hutch. I don't understand what her logic was. I think it's because it was a pull-out tray at the bottom of it. I think that's the only reason she got it. I mean, she said that it has a pull-out tray and it's easy to clean. I saw her TikTok videos and she had puppy pads at the bottom, which is toxic for guinea pigs because the chemicals and stuff in puppy pads, it's okay to have under fleece, but if you have it just there that they could chew on, it's, it's not good for them. You plan on getting a guinea pig, your best bet would be um, a Midwest cage. And even still, it feels too small for two. I would I would get bigger, and I plan on getting bigger as well. This was just last minute of me getting them. That that was the red flag. And also, she couldn't tell me the size of the cage. She took she took a screenshot of Amazon cage, like a, a picture of the cage on Amazon, but she couldn't tell me the dimensions because I wanted to know how big it was if it could fit in my boyfriend's car because he was the one who went to go get them. He couldn't even tell me the dimensions and I, I think that's weird. Sometimes you forget what dimensions of cages are what, but even still, I, I just think that was a little weird if you have an Amazon screenshot, but yet you can't tell me it when it's literally in there. I found, I found the exact cage and that's why I can say it's $80. I found the exact picture the exact screenshot of all of it so it matched up the thing is so tiny for something that's expensive when i said that she had puppy pads and how did i know was she showed me a video of her tiktok and i looked up her tiktok and i wasn't pleased with her tiktok and it kind of made me realize the type of person she was by looking at her tiktok i hate to judge a book by its cover but it's hard to when it's really shown how clear its cover is of what it is. I looked up her TikTok and I saw three videos of the guinea pig, the guinea pigs, and it was mainly of the boy. We'll get into that in a minute. She only named him and showed him in the videos. And so those three were of him. One was of them getting a bath. I didn't really have a problem with him getting a bath because he is a long-haired guinea pig, so I'd assume that they would need baths more than a normal guinea pig. And usually they don't need baths because they can groom themselves just fine. But with the long hair, you have to groom them and everything. I have a problem with that video. Another video was the one that I told you about was the puppy pad. And the reason I knew that was because she was feeding the boy in this hutch. The hutch looked kind of dirty and I know they can get messy easily, so I don't know how long it's been since she changed it, but the problem I had was this hutch has a ramp. You'll see you'll see in pictures I show you, this ramp is almost up against the wall. There's one ramp, then there is a platform, and then another smaller ramp. This tall ramp, it's like if a guinea pig goes down, they're kind of big, they're, they're pretty big and they're in that small hutch they're going down this ramp they're gonna instantly hit this wall and guinea pigs they're not climbing animals they don't need ramps they need they need flat square feet so that's that's what they need they don't really need ramps they're not climbing animals and I don't know if she puts the food at the top of the ramp or whatever or what she did, but this guinea pig was going down and I can tell that they were having a rough time going down it and I felt so bad. And I wonder if they have any back issues because of this. This ramp at the top, there's this open area. So you got this ramp and then more open area that has no wall or anything. So they could jump off the second story of this hutch and fall down and hurt themselves and there's nothing to protect them so that hutch is not good for guinea pigs and then the last video the last video was of one of her her cat playing with one of the guinea pigs 
and I had such an audible gasp. Now, you know, I have, I have dogs, I have cat, a rabbit. I am not going to force a friendship between any of my animals. Now, occasionally you'll see my dog Miko with cuddles. They'll sit next to each other and that's because I've trained my dog so much but yet I'm still right there next to them. I'm not gonna be recording. I may take a quick picture, but I'll be right there watching. And I know my dog, And but yet you always gotta make sure with your animals, because they are predators and rabbits and gay pigs, they are more like prey. So you have to watch out for that. I would never ever have it where my cat is across the room with the get any e pig and just playing with it. Do not do that. They are not friends. And you're going to stress out the guinea pig. So when I saw that, I was so disgusted and I was like, I need to get these these guinea pigs because it feels like they're just for show. I saw more on her TikTok of just almost like she's bougie. She's got BMWs, Mercedes, AMGs, expensive cars. And, you know, she has a cat, which is like a Persian cat. And then a dog, like these animals are like show dogs. And show these animals are like show animals, like very bougie looking. You see them in commercials. It upsets me seeing this because it feels like this woman got these animals on impulse and that's it. She doesn't do any research. So bad for the guinea pigs and seeing her TikTok did not help me at all on ensuring that they have a good home. Because it, it feels more like they're objects if anything. And the whole time she's talked about it, it's like the only comment she had was oh they're cute I didn't say much about them so that is the other red flag the reason she was rehoming them was because her kids are allergic to them and she doesn't have the time she doesn't she didn't even tell me their names she didn't tell me much about them she only talked about a boy which made me assume that they were all boys probably my fault this is honestly my first rescue with guinea pigs and I'm trying my best. Speaking of which, I have a GoFundMe for them. I'd appreciate it so much any donations. If you want to see these guinea pigs drive, donate a dollar, anything, anything would help. I'd appreciate it so much because they're going to need it. All the money is going to go for vet bills, cage, food, medicine, whatever they need. That's, that's what the donation is for. And I feel so bad for them. You're gonna hear worse in this story of what I saw. I feel so bad. And so if you wanna donate, I'd appreciate it so much. These guys have been through so much. I just want them to have the best life that they can possibly have. Another thing that I had to deal with was, you know, like I said, she gave for free real easily, didn't know much about them. She met up later than the actual time. Like I said, my boyfriend was gonna meet up. It was my birthday and I was like, I need to just rescue them because I've been thinking about them. She asked me what time and I said my boyfriend gets off work at 1 p.m. So sometime after that, I messaged her around that time and she said that she's leaving. Uh, she was like a couple hours away from where uh, my boyfriend was supposed to meet her. And the reason he was meeting her was because he's closer to her area than I am. So that's why he went to meet her. But she was a couple hours away in a different state. And, you know, I talked to her about it that night. I thought she'd leave in the morning to go, but I was wrong. She left at 2.30 p.m. And they were supposed to meet up at 1 p.m. And she was going to be there at 4 or 5 p.m. So that's a few hours and it's like, all right, well, whatever. He met up with her. It honestly didn't even take that long. I would think if, I would think if you were rehoming your animal, you would want to talk to that person. 
like when I rehome my tortoise, I talk to that person about um, my tortoise. You know, that's that's what previous owners will do is because they do care about the animal. It did not seem like she cared about these guinea pigs, just the way her actions are. She didn't have any food for them and told my boyfriend, oh, well, you could go into the pet store and go buy some. It's only $5. Lady, where have you been? It was probably $5 20, 30 years ago. Um, I don't think it's $5 now because I went into pet stores I was wondering, what did she feed them? Because when you move guinea pigs, like when you change their food, you want to mix their old and new food. And since I didn't have it, I don't know what I'm going off of. And I did not want to speak to her anymore because of how aggravated I was with her. If you're buying food for guinea pigs that are $5, it's most likely crap and it's not good for them. It's most likely got something bad in it that's not good for them. Personally, I like to go with Oxbow. Oxbow is really healthy. Oxbow is good for rabbits, and I've seen Oxbow being well known in communities of being good food source for rabbits and guinea pigs, so I just go with that brand. If you have a guinea pig, I would go with that, and online is a lot cheaper with food personally in my area and everything to order online than it is if I went to the store. When I got them, I cried. I cried at their condition. I was so upset. They were so scared. I haven't had guinea pigs since I was a kid. I've watched previous rescues. I especially love watching the pig room and, you know, all the stuff that he does for guinea pigs. And it, you guys should go check it out. He's really good with rescuing guinea pigs and knows what he's talking about. When I researched stuff, I really did for years because this is what I want to do. I love rescuing animals and taking care of them. When these guinea pigs came into my care, I cried because they had mats. They, their stomach um, of the brown and white one had pee all over their stomach. Like they've been sitting in pee. Think that's normal at all? Especially the mats. They were to the skin with mats on their butts all of them it this is like how much mats they had all three of them and it's so bad they smelt so bad even opening this bag it just smells awful i mean this is this is just one of them you know like look i look at that it was just to their skin and opening this it's like potent with pee and this wasn't this wasn't just car ride pee on yourself this was like so bad i felt so bad for them because they've been so neglected with their hair and i don't know about their diet and they've been in a small area and then I check their genders. There's one boy and two girls. I asked her if they're fixed and she said that they're not and that I should probably separate the boy because they can, they will mate easily, lol. I'm telling you, I was so mad at that answer. I wanted to curse her out. It's like, oh, okay, saying, well, oh, it's so funny to neglect animals. Like, that's so bad. And there's a difference between safely breeding them and then just completely neglecting them. Not caring if they're fixed or spayed or neutered and just sticking them in a small cage that's not fit for even one guinea pig and buying crap food for them. To say it was mad.
is an understatement. To say that they are neglected is an understatement. To say that she cared for these guinea pigs is not true. She told me that the girls are eight to nine months and the boy is four months. So that makes me think that she got the boy later on and to think how irresponsible that is to get a boy when you know they will breed and they are known to breed easily is ridiculous. I'd appreciate it if you donate to the GoFundMe because I plan on spaying and neutering them because if I'm gonna be honest, um, the boy is He's, he's bonded to them. They've all bonded well. They are, it feels like they're trauma bonded in a way because how much they've dealt with. He's the most socialized one because I think she played favoritism because constantly saying he, but he is obsessed with the girls and wants to be with them, but I have to get him neutered first. I have a piece of cardboard just in between the cages and zip tie. He doesn't like being separated from them, so I got a neuter and spayed them before I can let him in. I didn't know this when I first got them, and I just let them in and had the cage open. Like, both areas were open to him, and they were so happy. They were popcorning. They have been eating bell peppers and broccoli and greens. The boy doesn't really care for bell peppers. The girls really like bell peppers. I don't think she's gave them any vegetables if she's completely neglected them the way that I saw them. And I'm scared that the girls are pregnant. It might be a minute till I can spay them because I didn't realize they have to be spayed. So if you do rescue, learn from my mistakes and just to be prepared because yeah um he's gonna have to be separated from them for a little bit but i do plan on expanding their cage so when he is neutered i'm gonna open it up and he can be with them and when they're spayed as well i'm kind of concerned that one or two of them may be pregnant i don't know and i have to see if they are, they've slowly getting better with socializing, especially the boy because I think he's just used to it. Girls are the ones that are shy and I've been trying to work with them and getting them socialized and I'll show you the setup that I have for them as well. Appreciate all the support and all the donations and I will keep you guys updated on them and I appreciate all the support. I'll see you guys in the next one.